A beautiful spring evening at Lowe's Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina. Bud Pole qualifying coming your way. There are 49 Nextel Cup drivers trying to make their way into a slim 43 car field. And we got it for you here on speed. Temperature is the big thought of the day as they have practiced on a very hot, slick track all day long. The track is still hot and it is still slick. So the guys who have to go out early have their work cut out for them. Let's take a look at practice. What happened the last time these cars were out on the racetrack? Some of the faster guys to keep an eye on. Casey Mears in his Hendrick Power number 25 was fifth fastest in the practice session. Those guys like to run well because we're only a couple miles away from their headquarters. Another Hendrick car and the guy who has owned Lowe's Motor Speedway for the past few years, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 was fourth fastest on that chart. From Robert Yates Racing, Ricky Rudd in the 88, third quickest. And they could need a jump start to uh, use a jump start to their season so far with a good run tonight. And the Ray Evernham Motorsports cars are back on top of this chart once again at Lowe's. Casey Kane in the 9 was second quickest, and his teammate Elliot Sadler in the 19 was the fastest car in the final practice session before qualifying. Let's take a look at the whole rundown. Big chart, 1 through 10 here. It's Elliot Sadler on top. Kane Rudd, Jimmy Johnson is one of your NASCAR hot pass on Direct TV drivers. And Casey Mears round out your top five. Then it's Matt Kenseth, Joe Nemechek. Kyle Busch, Scott Riggs, and Jamie McMurray rounding out your top 10. So we have pretty much every manufacturer represented in the top 10. Well, folks, there's we take a look at 11 through 20. We're going to take a quick break here on Cup Qualifying. When we come back, we'll get you back inside the racetrack. Race number 12 of the 36 race schedule is this weekend at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Bud Pole qualifying on the way. And after a week off from points racing, we are back to business as usual. These are the ones that count towards the championship. Let's now head inside the racetrack and join Bob Dillner once again. Bob. And inside the NASCAR Bush Series ground, you see that car right there, the number six. One of the fastest cars until the very end as David Reagan pushes it. The guy blowing off the engine there, but uh, man, Casey, Kane over there in that nine car stole your spotlight late in that practice session because you were pretty quick up until he stole it. Just as long as he doesn't steal it Saturday night, I can handle this. Uh, you know, our discount tire Ford Fusion is pretty fast. You know, it feels pretty good to go out and, you know, be fast right off the trailer. And, you know, we kind of, you know, fine tuned it a little bit. We heard it here. We help it here. So, you know, uh, this Bush team's on a roll. We've been uh, doing pretty good here lately and we just got to uh, keep it up. But, uh, but first thing first, we got to go qualify a AAA car next. And I know you got to be happy that you are among the final contestants out there for qualifying in Cup today. You know, uh, the, the cup practice goes so fast. You know, you see you got an hour and a half or something like that, and, man, you were just boom, boom, boom after we scuff a couple sets of tires, and then it's over. So, you know, running the Bush car it just helps me with making laps on the racetrack. Uh, each car drives a little different, but Jimmy Finning's got it uh, ready to go, and uh, we'll be good. We'll be watching David Reagan tonight during cup qualifying here at the Lowe's Motor Speedway, and I bet you the pole sitter comes from the final 15 cars, Johnny. Now, Bob, that is a bet I won't take with you because I think I will lose it. The track is hot right now, and it's slippery, so the guys who go out early in this qualifying session definitely have their work cut out for them. The guys in the latter part of the draw, well, by luck of the draw, they should be looking better. Folks, stick around. we got the whole qualifying session with all the stars of NASCAR out tonight for you in just a moment. Stick around. Speed Channel welcomes you back to Lowe's Motor Speedway. It's Budweiser Pole qualifying on CTC Pole Night for Sunday night's Coca-Cola 600 that you'll see in high definition on Fox. It took till the last minute of practice. And that's when Sterling Marlin took the Pep Boys car into the wall. Not bad, not good. And in the last 30 seconds of practice, Michael Waltrip found the wall in his Napa Camry. So the only car excused from the qualifying draw was Marlin. He goes to a backup. Here are the drivers that must qualify on time. Note the 21. Not Kenny Schrader, not John Wood, but Bill Elliott behind the wheel. He has six champions provisionals, if needed, to try and get the Wood Brothers car back into the owner's top 35. 
Here's Matt Yoakum. 81-year-old Cardinal Glenwood couldn't call on a better shoe to help make an impact on this team, Mike, like you mentioned. They've got the safety net of a past Champions Provisional. So how is it going so far in the legendary 21? Good. I mean, it's just an honor to drive the car. I mean, these guys, uh, you know, from Leonard to Glenn and all the guys, as much as they've accomplished early in their, in their racing career to what, you know, Glenn, uh, uh, Lynn and Eddie has done here lately. I mean, it's a great race team, and just, I'm just proud to be here. I mean, it, it, it's a nice change from, and for me to come in and, and, you know, at least, you know, we're going to try to qualify our way in, but worst case scenario, we're in the race, and that's our main objective tonight. And, you know, it, it's just like I told Fatback a little while ago, you know, here I am, I'm getting in the car, you know, and we're, we're trying to work through some things. I said, nah, just put it back the way you had it, you know, and then we got we got pretty decent. So that's the things we got to work through. I mean, the, the thing about this stuff is you just about got to drive a race car every day. You learn something new every day, and, uh, you know, that's what I'm here for. And I said, you know, the biggest thing that's going to help me is getting the race Sunday afternoon and then, then be able to try to help them and go through from that point. A storybook ending, which would actually add to some great history four times in Wood Brothers history. The first time a driver got in the famous 21, in that weekend, they went to Victory Lane. One of those four happened right here in Charlotte, Mike. He is definitely on a drive for five. Bill Elliott in Air Force Blue this weekend. Hi, everybody, with Daryl Waltrip and Larry McReynolds. I'm Mike Joy as we get set for Budweiser Pole Qualifying. Well, you practiced in the heat of the afternoon, and some of these fellows are still going to have to qualify in the heat of the afternoon. Yeah, but it's real simple. It's, okay. no, it's, not, it's not a real no-brainer here. You hold it wide open and turn left. The guy that can do that the longest and the bestest, he'll be on the pole. That has me concerned, though, <laughs> because I go back, and you saw the highlights with Michael Waltrip with Sterling Marlin. Let's go back to open qualifying last Friday night. That was about this time right here, especially those 14 guys that are go or go home. They know they have to stand on it, but I'm telling you, you'll get lured in. This track still, especially over in turn three, still doesn't have the grip they're going to be looking for. The first car looking for that grip is Jeremy Mayfield in the 360 OTC Camry from Bill Davis Racing. He started on the outside pole here for last year's race when driving a Dodge for Ray Evernham. And people always say, you know, what makes this place so tough and what, what are you talking about the weather? You just saw Jeremy come out of the shadows of the grandstand. Turn two is still in the sun. Track's probably 25, 30 degrees hotter right there. But the hottest spot is where he is right now because the sun sets on that turn, turn three, all day long and then late into the afternoon before it goes down behind the grandstand. A lot of heat. And Darrell, you could see when he drove it down in the three and four, the car just would not stick to the bottom. His first lap was 29.62. He slows down two and a half tenths. It's hard to run faster on lap two because you start losing that grip. I think a lot of our guys that are locked in, they'll pretty much probably be one and done. A lot of the Gorgo homers are late in the session and that will not help Jeremy Mayfield's chances. Here's Chris Devota. Well, last year, this place was an amusement park. It was called Evernham Land. They did everything. They had the pole. Casey Kane had the broom out. You swept both races. So, Casey, can you do it again? Can you back it up and win another Coca-Cola 600? Uh, I don't know. We're going to see, uh, you know, the car car was good today. It's the best it's been in a little while. So, I was happy with our Dodge Chargers. Finished bush practice, and we are fastest there. So, so far, it's been a good day. I've, uh, I need to, I'm running out of time. I've been running all day long, but uh, we go out late, so that's good. And I'm going to go in and grab my Gillette Fusion and shave from it. Okay, well, you go ahead and do that. Of course, he's doing triple duty. That's why he said he's been busy in that Dodge Viper. He's in the Bush car and, of course, in his cup car. So we're going to let Casey go. But he did say this Coca-Cola win, guys, last year, one of the biggest thrills of his life. That's fine, Krista. Thanks. Tell him we'll bill him for the commercial. He's running the Bush race. He's got to qualify and then run the SCCA sports car race that follows qualifying here tonight. Must be planning on taking some pictures if he's going to go back and spruce up a little bit. Or he's getting cleaned up for someone. You never know. Maybe both. Maybe. I'm not even going there. Well, let's go with Mark Martin because uh, he has just taken the top spot with a 29.43 in the Army Chevrolet. He has two top five starts this season. Finished third in the All-Star Challenge the other night. Had a great run. Was late. Was really good late in that race when you needed to be good. Has four wins here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Looks like Mark's going to run this second lap. Yeah, I think with this tire, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see guys pick up maybe a little bit. Uh, things are a little squirrely on the first lap. Be about, about two tenths slower, which is about yeah. what Jeremy Mayfield did. Right. I'm surprised, though, those speeds. Uh, I mean, Mark's got a pretty fast car, and I thought they'd be way down in the 28s. Pushed in the center of one and two. Uh, 
balance was about neutral. Just low on grip, buddy. And I'm sure that's going to get better as the night I'm goes sure. on and the track cools down. New blue flames for Jeff Gordon on his DuPont Chevrolet. Saluting the uh, Department of Defense. Does he have the biggest championship lead ever after 11 races into the season? Let's see. I yes, he does. Say so. In the current point system. That came started, about in 1975. Right. Of course, that's why, with, one that's, why we, uh, that's why we have the chase. That's right. Because really and truly, that means very little other than bragging rights. And the one change since is that now you get five more points for a win than you did when the system was first devised, but that would not knock Gordon out of first place. Well, this car is not very good either. It's it's not uh, handling very well, it doesn't look like. Well, remember, the last run he made... Is a lot better. The last run he made in that last practice, and he's going to shut it right down. He was not happy. I bet you he's not going to be happy when he sees that time either. Oh, well, you can win here from the back. It's just harder. Speed's coverage of Bud Pole qualifying from Lowe's Motor Speedway is brought to you by Carrier. Turn to the experts for all your heating and cooling needs. And brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Click it or ticket. And by SeaDo. Break free and discover the exhilaration of SeaDo. Kyle Petty is the fourth driver on the clock in the Coke Zero Dodge. 29.82 the first lap and slower on lap two by the usual two tenths. Matt? Mike, Mike Martin got out of his race car. You were kind of smiling with your crew members here on the Mark Martin scale. Exactly. How big of a lap was that? That was really hard to do right there. I'm proud I got through it. Didn't tear our stuff up. We've got a great U.S. Army car. Love driving for these guys. Really appreciate them. And uh, it was really hot and slick when we went. We really got a tough draw there. We laid down the best lap that I could ask for. I would not want to have another crack at that. Um, I'm glad I made it through that in one piece. We, we got all we could get there. He missed the money cloud by about five minutes. In the sun, the track temperature was 110. In the shade, 101. Mike? Mark is the designated driver for Jeff Gordon if Jeff has to leave on baby watch in late June. Jamie Mack, the Irwin Tools Ford did not practice well, but admittedly they were not working on qualifying runs for most all of that session. Cut up off the bottom just a little bit down there, and he's a little high here in uh, three and four. Can't quite hook that uh, white line like I know he would like to, but there is some grip in the middle of the racetrack. There he was at the bottom of the chart, and then very late in the session, he went out and ripped off a, a lap that was 10th quickest. Yeah, he did make a, a practice qualifying run right as that practice session ended. Now, he will be one and done, but right now third quickest at a 29.63 just behind Jeremy Mayfield. Yeah, it, it felt good. I, uh, it did the same thing it did, though, in our bonsai run where it stuck pretty good, and then when I got back to turn three, I just I went through there real slow again. So sorry about that. Uh, still a lot of sun and heat in turn three. Krista? The shade is out just a little bit down here on the grid, but you know Juan Pablo Montoya has won big races. The Indy 500, the Grand Prix of Monaco. What about 600 miles, though, in a stock car? Are you ready for that? I think it's going to be long. It's, you know, it's a long race. The cars are going to be really hot. You know, this car is so hot. It, it makes it pretty tough, but I think we've got a really good race car, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, and as we talked about in the practice shows, very good at the mile-and-a-half tracks, good at Atlanta, good at Texas. That's Juan Pablo Montoya. Yeah, and I watched him in practice, and he was running that uh, handsome Harry groove right up next to the wall. That's right. Clint Boyer, the Jack Daniel 07 for Richard Childress. Got I'd his first bud pole at Darlington this I, year. I'd oh, say, oh, Darrell, oh, he goes, oh, oh, boy, Clint Boyer, trouble. way up the racetrack. Trouble. But all I was going to say about Montoya, I'd say qualifying, you know, you're going to see him right around the bottom. But I think he was starting to look for that upper groove, top groove, getting ready to, to do some race stuff come Ooh, Saturday. This car right here is going to wreck if he's not careful. It's just bottoming out. Looks like it's uh, going in the corner when it loads the front end up. It bottoms out and shoots up the hill with him. Could get better on the second lap, maybe with a little air pressure buildup. 
You know, Darrell, we talked about that in the practice session, if that indeed is what's happening. It's almost like the minute the car lands yeah. going down in there, it shoots up. The cars are going in the corner at a much higher rate of speed than practice. Things bottom out, and he's had about enough of that, pra that qualifying session. Yeah, I think he sees the same thing we do. I keep doing this. I'm going to wreck this thing. But you find things that you will not see in practice. You find them now in qualifying. But, Matt, uh, Jeff Gordon wasn't happy in practice. How about after that qualifying run? Well, let's check in with the four-time series champion. So we talked to Mark Martin. He said, basically, on the e-ticket ride scale, it was a 10 out of 10. How about you? Well, I think he was a loose. We've been way off today. You know, this same car we had here last week for the All-Star event, and and it never would take off great on, on new tires, so we didn't expect it to today. But we just we got too far off trying to secure the back. We tightened the front and uh, we made some great adjustments right there, but just didn't go far enough, and uh, I was just super, super tight, and it's not going to be uh, uh, where we're going to want to start with this uh, Department of Defense car, but you know what? We were awful good in the race last week. I think we're going to be really strong throughout the race again, and we're just uh, going to have to come from the back, unfortunately, but fortunately, it's a 600-mile race. Jeff Gordon, one of those drivers carrying special colors this weekend on Memorial Weekend. Denny Hamlin is the car on the track. The FedEx Chevy saluting the U.S. Marines. There's another guy, Mike, that wasn't terribly happy over here last week. Struggled with his car during the uh, the All-Star race. But he looks like he's on a pretty good run right here. He looks like he may be pole material temporarily. 29-31 yeah. beats Mark Martin by over a tenth of a second. Now, they've done a lot of work on this car since last week uh, in the front suspension area. But as we've often said here, this track is so weather sensitive. As the sun goes down, business the ought to pick up. Speeds will pick up. There are times you gotta ask yourself, do you think you've got the torque? Or do you know you've got the torque? Get Q torque power for trucks. Heat activated to help more of your engine's power reach the road. No leading synthetic motor oil delivers more torque than Q Torque Power. Full synthetic Q Torque Power for trucks. Unleash all your horses. At this track, you got it made in the shade. And there's the difference. You got that right. And that just means in the shade, which is pretty much from the middle of three and four where Nima checks at right now, all the way to going into turn two, that's in that area of 101 degrees track temperature. But turn three is just, well, turn two a little bit, but turn three mostly. That sun never, that's the last place that the track is in shade and it stays hot right there and slick. And they built the grandstands as high as they can to try and uh, shield it, get a little shade over there sooner. But this time of year, that's what we get. So Nemechek's first lap in the 13 car, 29.68. He's going to go ahead and run that next lap. But you can just see, like so many cars, way, way up the racetrack. He definitely will slow down on this lap. Right now, six quickest. I guess uh, Hire, the, the Chinese-based company, the first Chinese sponsor in NASCAR, they have plants here in the U.S., including... Uh, one in Camden, South Carolina. They must have liked NASCAR. They're on this car three weeks in a row. Yeah, good Darling, for them. Darlington, the all-star race, and now this week. Ward Burton in the state water heater Chevy from Morgan McClure Racing. Now, he's our second go-or-go-home driver of this session, trying to make his sixth race of 2007. Matt? Are you coming by later? Or? And Denny Hamlin working on post-qualifying plans. Well, which end of the racetrack was this car the best? I felt like one and two. I felt like uh, three and four. I kind of you know, slipped up and let it uh, ensure I'd stay on the bottom by, you know, kind of double double clutch in there. But uh, I don't know. Our, our car was uh, pretty good for the most part. A big improvement over practice. And um, hopefully that puts us somewhere in the top 20. We know the conditions are going to bite us there soon. And the temperature has come down, Larry Mack. I know you're keeping score up there. Another five degrees for the track temperature. And, and what I saw with Ward Burton, his four car, Daryl, he drove that thing so deep down into one and two. He stayed over at position number one, but just could not keep the car down from the center off. Yeah, it went way up the hill. And folks, just give you kind of here's kind of a DW analogy. If you're water skiing or snow skiing, that's what this joint's like when it's hot and slick. As the sun goes down, the track cools off. It's like you put on a pair of ice skates. Mm. Your blades will dig in. You can make that turn. 
Ward has a chance to be a little quicker here, displaying the U.S. Air Force anniversary logo on the hood. Don't believe it's going to do it. No, he's lap seventh quickest. Way up the hill again in three and four. He's seven hundredths slower on lap two. Krista? Well, Kyle Busch is climbing in his race car, and talk about a driver who knows how to handle a slick track. Has been very good here in just about everything. Trucks, Busch cars, and of course had one of the best cars at the All-Star Challenge. He had a very good car last week, Kyle. So do you have extra motivation, to, you know, looking at what happened last week going into this race now, extra motivation at this track? Not really. It's, uh, you know, we, we, we destroyed that one. It's written off. So, um, you know, this car was better in a test, we felt like, so we were going to save this one anyway. But we've uh, just come out here this weekend like we would any other weekend to try to win the race. So we'll see what we can do with our CarQuest Kellogg Chevy. All right, that's Kyle Busch, and he's going to roll off soon. And he had a rough Busch series practice uh, just, just as the track opened for final practice about an hour ago. Ended up getting into the wall with that car, and they had to go to a backup. Juan Pablo Montoya in the Haviland Dodge. He does have a fast car. I watched him. He was out there right, uh, running with some other cars, and uh, seemed like his car was really fast on the straightaway. He's got a lot of, a lot of power in the hood. And that's what it just showed, Darrell. Coming off turn two, he was back to fourth, and at the end of the back straightaway, he was all the way up to second. This is definitely going to be a good top five run for Juan. Third with a 29.57. And he's going to play two. Could see him using a little bit of brake, but again, that car just would not stay down in the middle of the corner. Get on the gas. Still touch it, but I can't get on the gas. Just having to wait. That's that's one of those things that a driver, it frustrates you because you wanted the car to turn and get in the gas, just won't cooperate. And that's one of the products of a, of a tire that's a little harder compound with a track that doesn't have a tremendous amount of grip right now. Denny Hamlin and Mark Martin are quickest. Coming up, Johnny Sauter, Tony Raines, and David Stremme. Welcome back to Lowe's Motor Speedway, Concord, North Carolina. New look for the number 70 Haas CNC racing entry. Radioactive energy drink for Johnny Sauter. Gosh, if it makes him any more hyper, I don't know what we'll do. No, but you got to give these guys credit to Mike. Saturday night in the All Star race, comes in and makes it into the uh, through the challenge, and or uh, and makes through the open and makes it into the challenge. That was a pretty nice job this kid did the other night. He had a great night, and he finished sixth in the uh, in the uh, challenge race itself. So good job on his part all night long. They struggled in practice today, though. Uh, didn't get the result they wanted until, again, very end. They went out, ran 14th quickest. But that's not showing up on the watch here. Not at all. 10th quickest uh, out of the 11 cars that have qualified. Johnny will definitely go for a second lap. This is that same race car, but it's almost like until it got into a run, uh, this car, you heard Jeff Gordon talking about it a while ago, this car didn't really start to shine till it got some laps into a run. Yeah, he and Martin Truex, I mean, they were strong at the end of that uh, first session that first session there in the open, but uh, it took them some laps to do it. Well, his run is done, and two laps of just over 30 flat. But Sauter, 10th of 11, and Tony Raines is next in the DLPHD TV Chevy. 24th in the next Hill Cup standings. Has 11 Bush Series starts here, including an outside pole four years ago. For Reigns. You know, back at Texas, all four of the Joe Gibbs Racing engines, including Tony Reigns with Hall of Fame Racing, they ran the R07 engine in that 500-mile race. Uh, had good results with it. The other night, 14 Chevrolets for the shorter All-Star event. They ran the R07 engine, including winner Kevin Harvick for Richard Childress Racing. Everyone very happy with what they saw performance-wise and what they saw as they tore them apart. And we're seeing about all of the Chevrolets back here again with that new engine package this weekend for the 600-mile race. And this is definitely a new engine. I mean, it's not a makeover of no. the small block. Uh, the small block, as we've known it all of our lives, is kind of gone. And this is a clean sheet of paper engine right here from, from every part of it. Tony, 10th quickest on lap one at a 29.86.
he was another car that somewhat struggled in practice earlier, 42nd quickest. Well, Larry, when we think about the uh, the night when uh, we were clocking laps up here and Kurt Busch went around here in 28.50, I think it was, we are way, way off in speed right now. Yeah, I mean, right now, Denny Hamlin, uh, he's three quarters of a second off of that time that we, we did clock Kurt Busch. Of course, that was in that three-lap average qualifying that first lap, but you would have thought they could come back and at least run that tonight. Yep. First lap's the good one for Tony Raines. Coming up, David Stremme, Kyle Busch, and Scott Riggs. David Stremme in the Coors Light Dodge will make his 50th Nextel Cup start Sunday night. Qualified second the first time he ran on a mile and a half racetrack this year. Las Vegas and then seventh in Atlanta. And he was actually pretty decent in practice earlier today. He was 13th quickest. Stremme knocks Mark Martin from the front row with a 29-42. He's going to go for two. He was pretty good down to the middle of turn one and two. You can see, though, cannot get off turn two, and the loss of speed carries all the way down that back straightaway. Definitely will not be any better on this second lap. Car looks good. It's really handling good. and uh, In the racetrack. Man. Smooth. Very smooth. Two tenths slower. So 29.42 right now put David second quickest. Great run. Sorry, for I thought I could get a little more. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> it well, that, that's better work. than saying I know I could get a little more. Exactly. He went ahead and tried it. That's right. Kyle Busch in the Kellogg's CarQuest Chevy. Coming off a tough night at Lowe's Motor Speedway last Saturday night. But he has two wins here in the Busch Series, two wins in two starts in the Truck Series, and a sixth place finish here last fall. Only one top ten start here in Cup, though. Yeah, he has those six low starts. And other than that one finish in Nextel Cup, you talked about the other five races, he finished 25th or worse. So this has not been a good racetrack for him. Three of those due to crashes. crashes. Well, you know what I, I said the other night? You watch him in that final 20-lap segment because it's either going to be records or checkers. And that was the kind of race that was. And I meant that not necessarily. I wouldn't mean to be derogatory. That's just kind of the way that race was going to unfold. And he was going to go for it. It was likely to happen. And he was a good guy to keep an eye on. Good one lap, way or though. another. Good lap. Fourth quickest for Kyle right now to 29.55. Well, that should end up top 15 or so. I would think so. Over. I don't know. This, this track's got to pick up some speed, guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're in the mid, you know, just uh, low 29s here. I thought well, surely we'd be in the mid 28s before the night was over with. Going to slow down about a half a tenth, but you know, with all the bad luck that he's had this year, he's still sitting up there in the top 12 in points at 11th. So still in good shape uh, as we approach the halfway point of the race to the chase. I'm scared to death. <laughs> I'm scared to death. But you know what I like about this kid? He's never he's never down about it. You know, no matter what happens, it's like, well, that's just racing and throw another car out there and we'll go after him again. Well, I talked to him Monday noon. He was a little sullen at the introductions at the uh, Rick Hendrick Charity Golf Tournament. And uh, I don't think it, it wasn't because of Saturday night. It was because he wasn't golfing. He had to go and do an appearance. Rodney Wise, you know, the youth movement is everywhere. Right behind Rodney Wise there on the flag stand is another little young man. He's got his green, white, and checkered out. He's working just as hard as Rodney is. Every time the cars come off the corner, he's got that green flag in the air, and he's waving it. Emulating just what his uh, hero up there on the flag stand must be doing. He hadn't missed a car, has he? No, uh -uh. he's on it. He's got his white flag out, and he's waiting. He's watching Rodney. Takes his key off of him. Ooh. When Rodney Ooh. bends over and gets there, here he comes. White flag in the air. Tell you what, Mike. Pole what I, setter. What I saw with this 10 car, Scott Riggs, down in three and four. This lap was headed south, but he recovered fairly nicely on the exit of four to uh -uh. fourth quickest. Oh, I thought maybe that was just a get-up-to-speed lap. Well, it might yeah, have been. It's hard to say. I think our tracker's broken. It might have been. We'll see how this lap turns out. 
because looks Riggs won the pole for both races here last year in the Valvoline Dodge. Okay. But that first lap, pretty decent first lap at a 29.50. Yeah. This will definitely be slower. You know, I'm not sure what's on that boy's shirt, but it says official. Yep. So he is an official of something. He's in the NASCAR training program. Driver develop, flagger development flagger program. De yeah, flagger. There you go. Is it flagger? Oh, yeah, we'll find out. Kevin LePage in a Dodge. Is he headed for the Coke 600 Sunday night or is he headed for the Huddle House? We'll see here. He's got work to do on this second lap right now. Kevin, 14th quickest, the slowest of the Gorgo -Go homers on that first lap at a 29.91. Just can't keep it down no. and can't pick the throttle up. Car just won't do no kind of nothing. Was late onto the track in practice. Missed about uh, half of the practice session. Slows down a whole yep. lot. That uh, 29.91, I just don't think that's going to get him in this show. Doesn't look like it. Krista? Well, we had to peel Elliot Sadler away from the crab boat captains, the guys from the show The Deadliest Catch. But we've got him over here by your car, and you guys have something special, too. The Silver Surfer, which is part of the new Fantastic Four movie, correct? Yeah, it's coming out here June 15th, and uh, awesome paint scheme. The guys did a good job, and uh, my charge is really, very fast. So we're really good in practice, and looking forward to a good run tonight. But uh, I like it. we got a lot of the, the, the characters coming in this weekend. Jessica Alba's coming in, so I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, I don't know. The call looks great, and it's fast, so that makes me... Uh, very proud to have it this weekend for the Coca-Cola 600. And I like that of all the characters, the one you mentioned is the girl, Jessica Alba. Go figure, guys. Go figure. So uh, is it the Dodge Fantastic car or is it a Charger? I guess we'll find out when he runs. I think it's the Jessica Alba car myself. <laughs> it could be. A.J. Allmendinger. Looks like he's got pretty good pickup. Dinger coming off uh, a great finish in the Craftsman Truck Series race here last weekend. I'm just starting to get a feel now as we're approaching a third of the way through this qualifying session. You need to run at least maybe in the 60s if you want to feel safe. That may be a decent lap to get him in, 29.63. Uh, right now he's the third quickest of the Gorgo homers, but he's in front of Ward Burton and Kevin LePage. I don't know, Larry. They left the, le they left the red wheels home mm. this week. And the bull has a big black black dot in the middle of him this week. But I tell you, this kid, he, uh, I, uh, he drives our truck, you know, and I listen to him on the scanner and talk to him a little bit. This kid really has learned a lot these first 10 races, 11 races this year. He's doing a lot better job now, getting good feedback. He's starting to really understand what's going on. Yeah, I was talking to general manager Marty Gaunt this morning, and I said, you know, if y'all give him, if you're patient sorry, enough guys. to give him no, one. I apologize. You're just one, fine. We'll be all right. One trip around this entire schedule, I think he's going to be pretty awesome once he hits him the second time. He's a talented race driver. There's no question of that. He's just never had a chance to be a talented stock car driver until this year. I think he's in the place where they'll give him that opportunity. They like him, yes. and, he's and they see progress. And, and most importantly, the sponsor owns the team, so they don't have to have a worry there. Marty Gott said it, it wasn't three races into the season, said, are, who are y'all going to put in that car? And they said, well, we have a driver in that right. car. As we watched Casey Mears start his qualifying run. They said, well, that would be different. Marty said, you know what? We are different. <laughs> Casey Mears driving for the National Guard. Well, that looked good. Rick Hendrick Chevy. Good into the corner. Didn't carry the speed out of the corner that he might have liked as you saw the tracker drift off to the right. Yeah, See he if just he can pick up here. Couldn't get back to the throttle where he needed to. But he's recovering nicely. If he can get off turn four, I think this is going to be a pretty solid run for this 25 car, maybe up there in the top five. He was happy with the car. He said it was handling good. And I, I agree. It looks, it looks good around the racetrack. Fifth, 29.52. And I tell you, Mike, not only do they need a good qualifying run, they need a good race come Sunday night because right there, they are sitting 35th in owner points, just 75 points in front of the 36th place car, 22 car of Dave Blaney. So they, they need a solid run Sunday night. But you know what? They haven't had any great runs lately, but they continue to add points yes. between the, uh, them and the 36th place car. Because from 36 on down, people keep missing they races. They keep having trouble behind him. Right. Casey has two top five starts here and two top ten finishes. Coming up, Martin Truex, Paul Menard, and Greg Biffle.
Martin Truex in the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet got his first ever Nextel Cup top 10 finish here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. It happened in this race two years ago. Got him a win the other night here too, Saturday night. In the uh, Nextel Open. Another car in the 2960, 2963. That puts him 11th quickest right now. I like that paint job. It's almost like it's chrome. You know, even though it has a very similar paint job that as that car did in the open in the next All-Star Challenge, this is a little different car. They felt like that car the other night was only good on short runs. They couldn't make it good on long runs. Well, let's see. It's black and silver. It's got red trim. It's got make it you all. think of anything? It's got it all, buddy. All it needs is a three on the side. You've got it. We're not going to see that for a while. Maybe someday, Richard Childress said, we might see a number three. His two grandsons are racing late models, one with granddad's number three and the Long other race. with, uh, their, get them then. with <laughs> their dad's 21. <laughs> Kevin Bono. Mannion already <laughs> pumping his driver yeah. up. Bono is telling him, say, good car, dude. Long race. We're in good shape. You know what he's selling him on? That they brought this car back and not the other one. That's, that's, that's right. the crew chief selling him on. Yep. We we got the right car. Don't worry. Don't worry. It'll race well. Sounds like that uh, uh, Truex might want to bring the other car, and, and Bono didn't. Well, here's his teammate, Paul Menard, who has five bush starts here, and Menard's on a different mission than Martin Truex. Paul Menard has to time his way into the field. And right now, the fastest of those drivers is Scott Riggs at a 29.50. How many times have we seen this? We were way over here to the middle of turn one and two. Now look where we are on the exit of two. Not quite as much uh, direct sunlight in turn three as we had earlier. He might have caught a little bit of a cloud here. Yeah, we're, we're getting to that point. We're at that transition point. Uh, I think we're going to see speed start to pick up. Uh, 64. Now those 60s don't look as safe as they did a little earlier, Larry. If, if you're going to be in the 60s, you want to be in the low 60s. Don't be in the mid to high 60s. I think if you're going to breathe easy right now, you need to be in the 50s or you've got a nervous hour ahead of you. Yeah, because it can only it can only get faster. Right. I mean, that's the thing we know. It's not like we're guessing it's going to get faster. It can only get faster. Second lap for Menard, slower, but only by a tenth. And we're actually now, we're still not seeing anyone pick up on that second lap, but it's no longer two or three tenths. It's down to about a tenth loss, which tells me the track is gaining grip. Here's Krista. Jimmy Johnson climbing into his race car and... You know, Jimmy, we were talking earlier. It is true. We were talking about some stats. Five wins at this track for you, five cup wins. That's the same as Dale Earnhardt and Richard Petty in much fewer starts. That's pretty impressive. Uh, that's great company. You mentioned, you thought that earlier, and I couldn't believe that stat. Uh, it says a lot about this race team, what we've been able to do together here. Um, and hopefully we can keep that alive once more. All right. Yeah, I had to confirm that stat for him. The only guys who have more, by the way, Bobby Allison and our own Daryl Waltrip with six. He's gone in for you, DW. Yeah, he is. And... Uh, at his age and at my age, he's got a real good shot, I'd say. Good company. Because I don't plan on making any comebacks. Now, Michael Waltrip in the same, uh, is this the same Napa Camry that he brushed the wall with at the end of practice? Yeah. I, I don't think they went to a backup car. I think he's going to be maybe in the 80, 79, 29, 79. I'm just, I you don't know, think that's going to be safe. I saw him running that high line in practice on a qualifying run, and I thought, well, then there's where he had to oh, oh, no. for Pete's sake, brother. That is a hard lift. He oh, was my. way too high there on lap two, Daryl. I just don't. Yeah, I'm fine. I do not. I Boys. just can't drive my car. Uh, I really struggle with hanging on to him. Poor guy. If you only. Gosh. Watch how high he is here as he, he starts working off turn two, Darrell. The car is just sliding, losing grip. And he's trying to stay after it. You know, he wants to try to get a better lap. He knows that one wasn't good enough to get in. And and you've got to say, thank God the oh, safer yes. barrier was right there. But he's going to take another pretty good lick right here at the end. Um, I'll tell you, boys, it, it's breaking my heart to watch this. A hard crash for Michael Waltrip. He misses the wall on the outside as the car goes loose. 
same place he hit the wall in practice, uh, scraped it down there on his other practice qualifying run. He was up high like that. I thought maybe he was trying to something different. I mean, you don't think he hit that wall hard. There was a coil spring came out of it yep. bouncing across yeah. the racetrack. There's parts flying everywhere. Another tough day for Michael, who has made only the Daytona 500 this season. Hey, race fans. You grab the bud, I'll grab the trophy. Welcome back to Budweiser Pole qualifying. Michael Waltrip climbed out of his Napa Camry okay. That car well used up and kind of doubtful if Michael's 2979 will hold up for a spot in the Coke 600. Greg Biffle for Roush Fenway Racing has three top 10 finishes here, but only one top 15 start at Lowe's Motor Speedway. And we're approaching a third of the way of this 2000. Oh, 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 oh boy, Greg oh, oh. just barely held on wow. for turn four. That's oh, that about was... as close as you can come to spinning out and not spinning out. That was amazing. And he shut it off right away. And uh, I think the stopwatch pretty much reflects it, a 29.89, 19th quickest. I, I, the people, I know the people at home, they just don't have any idea what this, what it, what it feels like when this happens and what it takes to, At not, 180 miles to, an hour. Not, to not crash. This takes incredible. Look at look, his hands look at in that. there. I mean, it just takes incredible. You don't, you don't think about that, folks. You just react. It's, in, it's instinctive how you save a car when it gets out of shape like that. And what I was saying, we're a third of the way through this 2007 season. We're starting to see changes come about. I think when owners feel like that drivers and crew chiefs are not on the same page, crew chief Pat Trice and Roush Fenway Racing parted ways this past week. Chris Andrews, the engineer, will look after the 16 car this week. Starting next week, probably even Sunday night, Greg Irwin from Robbie Gordon Motorsports will look after Greg Biffle and the 16 car as crew chief. All right. Elliot Sadler. Here's the man of the hour. Quick in practice, and let's see what the uh, number 19 Dodge Fantasticar. Up the hill a little bit. Had to lay out the gas a little bit longer, and I know he'd like to right there. Didn't hurt him too bad. Looks pretty solid right now. This is a money turn here, boys. He's Drop her down in holder. there. Get that left tire down on that white line and let her eat. Matt that throttle and bring her home. Oh, he's like going to be in good shape for right now. Or so. Oh, I think so. P1. 29-18. He beats Denny Hamlin by over a tenth of a second. But, Larry, I think we will continue to see these guys that were quick in practice. That time could uh, go right on down into the 28th. That's what I'm expecting. Yeah, no one wanted to see Michael Walter crash, but trust me, all these guys left to qualify love the time that that track had to cool down even more. That's right, because now the only part of the track in sunlight is the exit of two and the back straightaway. Yeah, Elliot had Elliot went about 15 minutes too early. Kenny Wallace for Furniture Row Racing backed his way into the Nextel All-Star Challenge by virtue of the fan vote. And here's Kristen. We're going to try to catch up here with Tony Stewart before he gets into his Home Depot Chevrolet. And Tony, I want to talk to you real quick about Lowe's Motor Speedway. Last week in the All-Star Challenge, you kind of came out of nowhere. You were up. You came out of nowhere last week. You were in the back of the pack. All of a sudden, we look up, top five finish. Can you do something like that in this Coca-Cola 600? I, I, in the 600, yes, but probably not in qualifying here. I'm, uh, I'm not sure that I've got a good enough feel for this tire yet to, to really know what I can do qualifying. I know we'll have a better car than what we're going to show qualifying, but... Uh, I'm looking forward to the 600. I mean, that last weekend is what I needed to get my confidence back up. This tire is so hard, uh, and the tracks come around. I mean, it, it, it was kind of a combination of two things, but now the tracks come around. Now Goodyear just needs to step up and, and give us a tire that feels a little better. But, you know, once, you know, once I get the feel of it, I think uh, we'll be fine. It's just a matter of running laps, and that was why my goal last week was just to run all 80 laps in the Sun Depot car. It was just to, to try to get a better feel for it and break our string of crash in three years in a row to the all-star race good news it's a long race yeah. you're gonna have a lot of time to move up <laughs> kenny wallace good first lap 29 63 that's going to be right in bubble territory now scott riggs is locked into the field 
Wallace's run will lock Jeremy Mayfield in, and it will also lock Kevin LePage out. LePage goes home, and Wallace right now is fourth of the eight go or go homers. Pretty impressed with what Kenny Wallace did. He eased that thing in the corner, but he picked up the throttle, and when he got in it, he stayed in it. Right now, he's right up there 12. Jeff Green in the Best Buy Chevrolet racing for Fisher House. Uh, houses being built on the grounds of U.S. military hospitals for families of injured servicemen. Let's see what the former Bush champion. Oh, no. Right there in turn two. Boy, and you, could, you know what? You could see those tires start to turn to the, the front tires start to turn to the right a little bit. That car started getting a little free with him right in the middle of the corner. And you could see him almost turning it to the right, trying to stay in the throttle. Now they are 23rd in owner's points, so Green will race here on Sunday night, but from the back. Because I'd say they will be going to a backup car. He uh, He's bringing it around, driving it in, but I think that's going to be a little too much to repair. And so what we're seeing tonight is, is the fears that NASCAR have about not locking in the top 35. Uh, guys go out on a qualifying run just like Jeff Green did then. Uh, if they start the fastest 43, Jeff Green may not race this weekend. Right. And so uh, that's, the, that's the juggling act that NASCAR is kind of going through right now. Well, let's meet the man who is fastest so far and see if he thinks that time will stand up. Matt? And the big question, Mike Joy, is now with the delay because of this accident, it gives the other guys behind you a little more time. Have you gone late enough that that's not going to be that big of an issue? No, I, I think some guys are definitely going to run faster than that. I left a lot on the table. I uh, I asked my guys to make an adjustment, and I, I think it might have hurt us. But it's still a great lap. Uh, just fantastic. Four Dodge Chargers been fast since I got here. We've been fast in practice. And you now put us in the top four or five, but my teammates going to be pretty good too. But we'll see. I'm proud of my guys. We had a good run, and we'll have a good starting spot for the Coca-Cola 600. We both have had a huge day. Some guys from the deadliest catcher here. Is, I mean, I know, Hanson and, and Everybody's here. I mean, all the guys guys are here and I'm a huge fan of watching Deadliest Catch so uh, that kind of got me pumped up. I stand on pit road, they all showed up, they're big NASCAR fans. I'm like, guys, I'm fans of y'all. Y'all are crazy what y'all do. So that's cool the guys from Deadliest Catch are here. That, that was pretty, that was a good honor to meet them. Thanks, Elliot. Thanks. I bet they think it's pretty cool that they're on pit road at a NASCAR race. Remember that adjustment that Elliot wanted to make uh, during practice and, and he didn't want to say anything about it on the radio? Right. And his team, I told you, they were trying to talk him out of it. I reckon the team lost. That was right at the end yeah. of practice. Yeah, right at the end of practice. All right, here's the fellow who thinks the Lowe's Motor Speedway is his house. Juked her a little off turn four coming to get the green. Jimmy Johnson and the Lowe's Chevrolet. And, you know, even though he was fast in practice, Darrell, we watched him a couple of times he had his hands full with his 48 car. It's right on the edge, man. I mean, that's, that's what, the, what it takes to go fast. You want the car to turn. You, hear, you keep hearing the guys wanting them to turn. The only way you can get that done is put a big old right rear spring in there, and then you're riding on ice, baby. He has two poles here and four he second thing. row starts. Mike, he slowed down so much. He mm. is so free, I think, that he had to really back it off. He's going to be right there with his teammate Jeff Gordon. It looks like he's 15th quickest. I think it was just way, well, way. Let's see. He's 15th, and Jeff Gordon's 16th now. Both of them run right there in the mid-60s. And you can just see that back end is sick, just hanging out ever so slightly. One one-thousandth difference between their times right now. Now, Jimmy's going to go ahead and run this second lap. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but we'll see. Much better in this end of the speedway. I believe he's going to improve, Darrell. He, he got off a of turn four pretty good. In fact, he looks like he may even pop up into the top ten. This would be the first car to pick up, and he'll pick up about a tenth all the way to ninth quickest. Thing must have tightened up a little bit for him on, on lap two. Coming up, Bobby Labonte, Tony Stewart, and Mike Bliss. Darkness beginning to descend on Lowe's Motor Speedway as Bobby Labonte jumps up to third in the Chocolate Checks Dodge. The car looked really, really good, guys. I mean, he was a little, little soft off turn two, but he nailed three and four. He yeah. got through there better probably than anybody I've seen all night. Yeah, he was 11th quickest in practice, and right now that puts three Dodges up in the top four. Not going to improve on this one. He's going to go ahead and run this second lap. Now, that's going to be a hard car to find on the racetrack uh, Sunday because what color is it? Uh, I guess it depends on what direction you're looking at it. It kind of looks like the 88 car. It's the whole box bit. of Crayolas on that one. It's a yeah. very busy paint scheme. <laughs> Here's Krista. 
Well, Ryan Newman is on quite a roll right now, coming off three straight top tens. They also won the Nextel Pit Crew Challenge. We're talking about momentum, and you've really, you're on a roll, three straight top tens. Yeah, the guys are doing a great job. Obviously, the Pit Crew Challenge was a big deal for them to win that, and uh, this all told Dodgers running pretty good. We never did a qualifying run in practice. Just look forward to this opportunity. Uh, we got a good draw finally, so we're looking forward to trying to follow through with it. And congratulations on the milestone, 200th start for Ryan Newman. And he's got a big smile, so maybe the rocket is back. We'll see as Tony Stewart brings the Home Depot Chevy out for its qualifying pass. And he kind of told us, don't expect too much. I think Tony's just skeptical of the tire. You know, he's got in his mind that this tire didn't have a lot of grip. You see, you see cars spin out and have trouble, you know, in the early run, in the lap, first lap or two. I think he's kind of got that in the back yeah. of his mind. Well, look at this. I think we're all wrong. He's on a top 10 run, Daryl. Got to be a great qualifying run for this 20 car. Well, there's one thing we know about him. He loves to make you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, good job, because Tony's lap is sixth fastest, a 29-49. And one reason I look for him to run good with this car, this is the car that he won about three races at the end of last year with. This is definitely his favorite race car. And, and when I say he loves to make you look bad, that's his way of kind of picking on you. Well, for as bad as that car was in practice, it certainly was great on that first lap. She's puffing a little bit out the overflow, but uh, I think that first lap's going to be pretty good. Sixth for Stewart. All right, back to the go-or-go-home list, where Scott Riggs and Jeremy Mayfield are locked in. Kevin LePage goes home, and five... Go get my per diem. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So he said, he told his boys for it, don't worry, I got this under control. So five spots remain to be filled, and Mike Bliss racing for the Paralyzed Veterans of America organization is set to go. Now, Mikey had a little trouble over here last week trying to qualify. Yep. So uh, we saw him turn around off turn two last week. Said he liked, this car, the, he liked the car he has. For the 600, if you can just get it down the racetrack. Yeah, that's not a good place to be. No. Not at all. That did not look good. Not as you can see on our track, it's not looking very good either. The lock-in right now would be 14th quickest. Uh-oh, she got way. She got out of control right there. And you that's could gonna, hear him. That's going to do him in right there. You could hear him because that's going to kill the second lap yeah. by virtue of where he had to get back out of the throttle off turn four. Yep. So Mike Bliss at a 30-55. Needs a big pickup here. I could see him picking up if he just doesn't have a, another issue like he had down here on this first lap. You know, this team got on a roll there uh, about four, five, six races into the season of making some races, but they've been struggling here of late. Boy, he's trying to get that thing done on the apron so he can have plenty of racetrack to work with. It's going to be close. Nope, Mike Bliss will go home with a 30-49 for BAM Racing. Good news is that'll lock go A.J. Allmendinger in. He's going to make another race. And coming up are David Gilliland, Casey Kane, and the Rocket. Nice lap for David Gilliland in the uh, Shrek the Third M&M's Ford. 29.57, he's 10th, and he's the quickest forward. And, Mike, we want this car to run well on Sunday night because Doug Yates is donating a part of their Sunday's race winnings to assist the rebuilding of two Charlotte area parks, which will be dedicated as memorials to two local police officers, Jeff Shelton and Sean Clark of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, who recently lost their lives in the line of duty. So we want to see this car run good Sunday night. Yes, we do. Matt? Bobby Labonte, fifth last fall, currently third on the board. One end of the racetrack hurts your run, Bobby, more than the other. Yeah, I did. Three and four was a little bit, I just never got to the white line good enough. And I, just, I, had, I was going to have to slow the car down too much to get there, and I didn't think that that was going to help me off. So I just had to stay in it, but I just didn't carry the speed or, or have the speed through the center like I needed to. But uh, the guys did a, guy, a great job. Uh, we got chocolate check cereal on the car this weekend on our Dodge, and uh, they, everybody did a great job. And, uh, you know, we, we were 11th fastest in practice. So, you know, we, we kind of worked towards this. We want a good starting position. So hopefully this will hold up to a, to a, a good, good starting spot. Casey's out there probably outrun us here, but, but hopefully be good. And and uh, so we'll have a good race on Sunday. But I uh, feel good about it, and the guys have done a great job. And, you know, just uh, just got to keep working at it. Thanks, Bob. Yep, thank no, you. I don't think you got to worry about Casey or Bobby. He's uh, He's got his hands full. Yeah, he could not even rethink about turning that car down to the bottom of the racetrack. 
just barely clicks the top 10 with a uh, lap identical to Kyle Busch, 29.557. Now this is much better looking down there in morning two. He didn't go up the track like he did on his first lap. Uh, I could see this car picking up a little bit here. Right now we still have a ways to go, but uh, definitely looking much brighter for the Evan cars, especially here in qualifying. Right now all three of them in the top 10. Not sure this is going to be any quicker for Casey. Yeah, but identical. <laughs> almost, almost identical lap, so he'll be 10th quickest right now. So we got a lot of dodges up there in the top 10. Second one felt better, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember earlier we were telling you about that cool dune buggy that Casey Mears has, the one with the uh, 700 horsepower Corvette engine off the back? Oh, my God. Well, it is registered and street legal in some states. And he's driving it home. Looks like he was headed to the house. I'm not worried about the car. I'm a little bit worried about the driver. And he doesn't need a road to do it. No. Whatever comes his way. <laughs> Here's the rocket. You saw the big smile on Ryan Newman's face before uh, he went out to qualify the Alltel Dodge. He has, oh, he has a bunch of poles here. Oh, yeah. And he might have one tonight because I tell you, when you see him smiling like that, I haven't seen him look that confident before qualifying in a long time. Got his first bud pole here. He's got five of them at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Uh, you see one down in the bottom like that? That thing is digging. You better believe it because what he did, he picked that throttle up. He turned it to the bottom and he never had to think about cracking that throttle. This car looks a lot like it did back in the day, <laughs> which was about a year oh, ago. Yeah. He had 10 Lost. straight starts here in the top four. Not in two, none in 2007, but he's back. It's going to be is close. Back. Oh, yeah, 29-14. He knocks Elliott Sadler off by four one-hundredths of a second. Puts four Dodges still up there in that top five. But you see how that car is sucked down to the ground? We haven't seen that in a while. It looks like it's down there eating the earth. It's the way it looked at, Atl at Atlanta when he sat on the pole a couple of months ago. So you got the Rocket and the Silver Surfer on the front row. That's, that'll give them something to write about. They're both in Dodges. That'll give them something to write about. And the second lap is slower by two-tenths. Definitely starting to see this group it, track together. I didn't like the first one, so I ran the second one. Here's Krista. Dale Earnhardt Jr. down here talking with the president of Lowe's Motor Speedway, Humpy Wheeler. And Dale, we want to talk about your cool car. I know you you addressed the media a little bit about this. Who designed this? Was it a buddy of yours? Is that how this whole thing came together? Well, that car is uh, still in the box. It'll be here. We'll pull it out in uh, July for the Daytona race. But uh, it's the camo car. It's pretty much camo. Don't really have to have any design specialists for that. But um, I'm real proud of it, and uh, I love the program. Uh, anytime we can... We can pair up and assist the military and tell them not only you know help out some of the families within the military, but uh, when you can uh, show the other uh, soldiers that are overseas and still in the states that we're proud and, and we support them and thank them for what they allow us to do every day. It's really a great feeling. So um, they don't hear it enough. So uh, hopefully this little little uh, shout out will make a couple guys happy. I could not say it any better. Of course, part of the American Heroes program is paint scheme. Thanks, Krista. Ricky Rudd on track, and he's in the top five in the Snickers Dark Ford of Robert Yates. He was third in practice. He's fourth right now, and he's the fastest Ford with a 35. And I know during the test out here a couple of weeks ago, this 88 car was consistently quick, and uh, they backed it up. Kind of like that uh, purple on that bad boy. He had a good lap going until he got a little wiggle off turn four. Well, a dark car to race in the nighttime. Thank the Lord for the night. <laughs> Reed Sorensen in the target Dodge will make his 50th Nextel Cup start on Sunday night, which is not bad for being just 21 years of age. First lap, 29.73, puts Reed 24th quickest. And right now his teammate, David Strimmy, the 40 cars up there, sixth. Other teammate, Montoya, is 14th. A little better this lap? Yeah, well, it's looking a whole lot better until he got right there. And then up the track, she took off with him, and that cost him time. And the tracker goes to the right. You know, we were joking earlier about you can win this race from the back, and uh, Jeff Gordon right now 22nd as Sorensen ends up 24th for now. The chances of winning from 20th or worse here, based on history, 1 in 19. Yeah, it's about a 25% chance. Is that one in 19? No, it's about a four and a half percent chance. Oh. 
worse than you feared. Uh, something like that. Matt. And Ryan Newman's down here. First off, you said you came out of turn four down the front stretch. You looked up at the board and you couldn't see your times. So you're like, oh, I got to run another one. Yeah, I looked at the pole and I saw the 19 was still on top. I'm like, man, now I got to do this again. But uh, it was a good run for the Altel Dodge. Just in, you're going 200 miles an hour there, so it doesn't update that quick. But um, it's a good run. Uh, Michael Nelson, the guy's doing a great job. Great Penske Jasper engine horsepower. And uh, just keep working on We never did a qualifying run in practice. And uh, we got half of one in with the uh, yellow flags there at the end of happy hour, but uh, practice there. But uh, a good run for the guys. Uh, Hopefully it holds up. The track's going to continue to get better. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Dave Blaney in the Caterpillar Toyota. He's going to lock in here with anything better than 19th. This oh, yeah. is way better. No, he's looking really good. That car is sticking, baby. Cat Camry comes to the line, hunting a top five start. Got it. Oh, yes, yeah. 2937. Oh, Blaney likes this joint. You know, he won his bush race over here, and uh, he likes his place. And, Darrell, we talked about it earlier. All seven Toyotas had to lock in on time. Right now, we already have three locked in. We talked about this in the practice session. <laughs> I think that pretty much sums it up, what he felt about that lap. But Toyota making a little change to the engine combination. Not the engine, but just camshafts, things like that. Giving them a little more bottom end to get them off the corner. Yeah, I think as we said in our practice show, you know, you can work off, an engine can work off of velocity, and that's when you get torque, or it can work off of volume. That's when you get that big horsepower number. How you control that is the size of the cylinder heads, the size of the intake manifold, the exhaust headers, the tailpipes. There's a lot of things that you can change to change the power curve of an engine, and that's what they've done. Kevin Harvick. In two days this season, he's banked two and a half million dollars or more, Daytona. And the next till All-Star Challenge last Saturday night. And I tell you, this car, if it just comes back and runs a lap, anything like it did at the end of the All-Star race last week, he'll be right up front. And we should mention Dave Blaney's run did send Ward Burton home in the state water heaters car. Now Kevin was 21st quickest in practice, and that looks like about where he's going to end up on his qualifying lap. Right now you can see the tracker losing a little ground, getting off in the corner. But the car looks like it's handling really, it's not, I guess he's not pushing the car that hard. I know he's probably doing all he can, but nonetheless, the car is handling good. Really looks nice on the racetrack. 18th with a 29.62 for Harvick. And I know this group had to be happy for obviously a lot of reasons winning that next All-Star Challenge, but this has not been one of their better racetracks as he's going to shut it down. In fact, his last six races, points races here, he's finished 14th or worse. Well, of all the good things that happened in the All-Star race, that move he made off a of turn two over there to get the lead, yep. that was probably the, the move of the night, obviously, to yes. win that race. Once he got out front, Jimmy Johnson caught him, but that was, a, that was all he could do. Well, we've got four go or go homers to go. Three drivers have already been locked out. And you see the top seven instead of the top eight because we know Bill Elliott will be in the race. Here is Dale Jarrett, who must qualify on time in the UPS Camry. His teammate Michael Waltrip is the car on the bubble. I believe DJ should be able to get this car in the show. He has to beat Michael's 29.79 to have a chance and beat Kenny Wallace's 29.63 to lock in. And it looks like he's going to do that handily. I believe so. I, I think this car is good enough to get in there, but oh, no. he's losing time right there. Holy cow. Got in the corner good. Actually went through the middle, but could not get off the corner at all. I mean, lost a wow. tremendous amount of ground. And, and this team actually struggled in practice earlier today. A great half a lap, and then. Yeah, I think he lost his confidence in the car once that happened. Working with his new crew chief, Jason Burdett, moved over to replace Matt Borland, 2970. Well, that will bump Michael Waltrip out of the field, but it only moves Jarrett to the bubble. Now, if Dale Jarrett could possibly pick up seven one hundredths of a second on this second lap, he could lock himself into the show. I tell you, this is a better looking lap if he can just stay in it right here and stay after it. He has to get to 21st. Cars, I think he's going to do think, it. I think he is too. The car looked a lot better off turn four that time. 
He's yes. in. Yes. Good job. 29.60 for Jarrett, and that will be fast Come enough on, to race. Jarrett. Second <laughs> lap, 29.60. Awesome job right there, baby, in the show. That's his you new, are the man. new crew chief, Jason Burdett. This will be the first race that Jason has made with Dale Jarrett because, remember, he has missed the last two races at Richmond and Darlington. And that's something Dale Jarrett probably hadn't heard this year. You're the man. That's so, so important. The power of positive racing. Krista? Well, Matt Kenseth knows what it takes to win a 600-mile race. You did that back in 2000. So give us the secret. What, what is it? That was a long time ago. If I knew the secret, I would have done it like six more times like Jimmy or something. But um, I don't know. A lot of things changed between uh, you know, then and now. But we had a great car last week. We brought the same car back. And uh, hopefully I'll be a little smarter this week. Be there at Dan and hopefully have a shot. All right. Matt Kenseth. Next up, Brian Vickers in the Red Bull, number 83. Now, for Vickers to get in, he has to beat Paul Menard's 29.64 to move on to the bubble, and he has to beat Kenny Wallace's 29.63 to lock into the show. He so got girls. off the corner awfully good. I think this yep, is going to be think, good enough. So, girl, looked like she was coming to me. He's in 29.62 by a hundredth of a second. Vickers will race. Paul Menard. Two one hundred slower than Vickers goes home. But it's just unbelievable. Right now, Dale Jarrett is 17th at a 29.607. Now, that's 17th. Jeff Gordon is 26th at a 29.674. It is tight, tight in there. Vickers going to slow down on his second lap. So one spot remains to be filled, knowing that Bill Elliott will be in the show. And that is between Kenny Wallace's 29.63 and David Rudiman, who comes up in a couple of cars here. And here we are again, talking thousandths of a yeah. second. A.J. Allmendinger right now is locked in at a 29.630. Kenny Wallace is not locked in at 29.633. And here's Dale Arnard Jr., who got a 100-point penalty and lost his crew chief, Tony Murray Jr., until July because of unapproved wing struts on his car at he was, Darlington. Well, that was good right there, I can tell you. Yeah, he was awfully good in practice. He was 12th quickest with this camouflage eight car. I hope we can find him on Saturday or Sunday night. How about that right there, boys? If he can get through turn three and four with this eight car, car looks awfully good right around the bottom. You know what, Sunday night, I want to see all junior nations show up here in camouflage. <laughs> That's going to be a great lap right there, guys. Well, they're going to like this qualifying run. 29-24, I think the crowd speaks for itself. any better from the seat so thanks for the car man good job y'all did good today we're the proud of you and we need to mention tony uri jr again as you mentioned mike suspended until july the 4th tony gibson who is a veteran in racing will look after this car during the month of june so dodge dodge chevy chevy ford toyota that's the way the top six stack up right now and it's time to see who goes and who goes home Here's the uh, Burger King double O for David Rudiman out of Zephyr Hills, Florida, and out of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And boy, this kid's a qualifier. Yes, he is. Uh, he'll get everything she's got and then some. I can guarantee you that. Not good in practice. 11th out of this go or go home group. Whoop, whoop. Keep her down, bud. Keep her down. Looks like Michael's car right there now. That didn't look too sporty. He has to be a 29-63 and get right past that green line at 24th place. Oh, no, place. no, he's in on the apron. That's bad news. going to be good. Bad news, guys. He got in on the apron. So Michael Waltrip Racing crashes two and gets one in the race. Rudiman goes home. He just totally missed the third turn. I mean, he was uh, way, way down on the apron getting into three, trying to cut that corner and get those wheels down there and get that grip, but I'm afraid he might have miscalculated a tad. Watch his entry into three over here. So he got in right there just below that yellow, uh, white line, getting in the corner, that upset the car and shot it up the racetrack. Now, Darrell, 
I, th I could be mistaken, but I thought I saw Sparks at the start of that replay before he got down in the corner. Not I, sure from what. I saw it, that what they do a lot of times, they put new skirts on the car to qualify so that they'll get maximum grip or maximum uh, sealed off from a racetrack. But see right there, that's when he got down on there a little too low and see the car take off. But, Mike, if you do get down on that apron because of the difference in banking, it'll definitely, the car will bottom out down there as yeah, well. That's and, what we and saw. And a lot of times they will add to the uh, skirts on the side so it'll seal off good around the racetrack for qualifying. So David Rudiman fails to make the show. Kenny Wallace will race in the Coke 600. David Reagan in the Roush Fenway, triple A Ford, first lap, 10th, 29-46, shut her down. I would, because I'm telling you, that was not real pretty. But it was fast. But it was fast, boys. And the only thing I can figure, Daryl, down in three and four, you and I were both looking at the same thing. He was way up the racetrack, but he never rolled out of the throttle. I got, nice run for the rookie. I got a lot of throttle, and I got a lot of track, and I'm going to use all of it. <laughs> it's out there. That's right. He is the second fastest Ford, Ricky Rudd is the fastest, but there's a lot of Fords left to go. Now, we know that Bill Elliott will race because he has a champion's provisional. The question will be, will he have to use it? And we'll have to wait and see what Bill's time is to let you know that. But the go and go home list is set as David Rudiman's wreck rolls to the garage. Jeff Burton. Two wins at Lowe's Motor Speedway, both in the 600. And he has four top ten starts here tonight in the AT&T Chevrolet for Richard Childress. He was 25th quickest earlier tonight in practice session. Had a good all-star challenge. Quietly sat back there and finished up the top five and fourth. It's actually the AT&T Mobility Chevy. That's the new name for singular. He's starting to come back whoa, a little whoa. bit off car is just, That car is tight, though. That's that push loose coming off the four. He's going to be right there with his teammate, Kevin Harvick, right now. Harvick's 23rd. Right after lap one, Jeff Burton will be 21st. Car looked just a little snug. at uh, kind of wanting to push the front end, and he's having to try to make it turn. That's when the back end steps out. As Robbie Gordon says it's tripping over the front tires. That's a good example of it there. Yeah. This lap definitely going to be slower than lap one. So right now, Jeff Burton will be 21st quickest. So Jeff Burton. Let me get the green. I, uh... Let's check with Matt. Well, and I don't know what has been bigger, the excitement of Tony Gibson and the crew guys over how well you've qualified or how proud you are of what they've done in the situation you are with Tony Jr. back at the shop. I felt great about my cars and testing. We brought an experiment, you know, a different kind of car here for the Winston. It didn't work out that good or the all-star race. But uh, so we came here today in the first lap. I knew we were we were back to basics and, and, and running what we know. And, and uh, the car's driving great. We come off the trailer fast. Uh, Tony Gibson's done a great job. I'm lucky and fortunate to have a guy like him around to fill in in a position in a situation like this he's going to do a great job tony jr tells him all he can tell him gives him all the information he can give him and tony's got to do the best with it and he did a great job today and i look forward to a great run this weekend how many times has he called you guys today uh it's i don't think the phone ever got hung up you know to be honest with you um we were uh constantly in in conversation with Tony Jr. throughout the practice, trying to feed him as much information as possible. And he, he, you know, had some ideas and stuff, and we tried. But we basically qualified like we came off the trailer. The car was good, and I was really happy with it then. Junior said, he's not here, but we're not out of touch. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Gordon, first lap 32nd for the Jim Beam Ford, 29.78. Now, right before we started interviewing Dale Earnhardt Jr., we had just a snippet of Jeff Burton audio that said coming to the green and it got chopped off. What he said was coming to the green. I actually hit something on the racetrack. Remember, it was only two cars before Burton that David Rudiman ended up wrecking over there. Sounds like he may have hit something off of Rudiman's car. Second lap, same as the first for Robbie Gordon. 32nd right now with five drivers left to go. Robbie working with a new crew chief. Started last week at the All-Star Weekend. Gene Need coming from Kevin Harvick Incorporated. And as I mentioned earlier, his crew chief, Greg Irwin, will be moving on to Rouse Fenway Racing. Krista? 
Well, right before Carl Edwards got in his car, he handed me this. It's half of a $100 bill. So, Carl, what's the story with this? Well, uh, Humpy came over and he said, what do you think you can run? And I said, man, I, I think we can run a 29 flat. You know, I was feeling pretty good. And he pulled out 100 and tore it in half and said, well, if you do, I'll give you the other half of this when you get done. And if I don't, i got to give it back to him. So um, hopefully this Office Depot Fusion runs like it did last week. It'll be great. Some extra incentive for our last guy who's going to go out. Thought was his pay. I thought that was his pay for being the pit reporter uh, last Saturday night with us on speed. Bill Elliott driving for the Wood Brothers in the Air Force 21. As a past champion, he has six provisional starts in his pocket. To not use one tonight, he's got to be 27th or better. I think he's going to be gonna okay. Do it. Yeah, he's going to be in good shape. I watched Bill practice, and uh, yeah, he's 19th. That's good move, a good run for him. I watched him practice, and when Bill practices kind of where he was, I kind of felt like he would step it up. Now let's explain how this works. Among the go-or-go-homers, there are eight spots available. If Elliott is in one of those eight qualified positions, then he does not need the champion's provisional to bump another driver out of the field. Right now he is third of eight with a 60, and that's where he'll be, 19th overall, third out of eight. So he does not use one of those provisionals for the Coke 600. But I tell you, I'm amazed. All of our go or go homers, they're almost clunked right together where they've qualified so far. And with that's a big deal for Bill because he says, hey, I didn't need that provisional. I'm a great race car driver. Speed's coverage of Bud Pole qualifying from Lowe's Motor Speedway is brought to you by sea -Doo. Break free and discover the exhilaration of sea -Doo. I want to tell you something that's going to be exhilarating. These last two or three cars now, they've all got a legitimate shot at the pole. Yes, they do. Well, how about J.J. Yaley, who stepped up to a 10th place run, 29-45 for the Interstate Battery Chevy. Nice run. He was pretty solid in practice all day long. Well, you got the 17 car going out now, Kenseth. You got the two setting over there in the wings, and the 99 who says he can run a flat. And you know what Matt Kenseth did not say in his interview? Well, we're not going to qualify well, but. So let's see how he does in the RNL Carriers Ford from Roush Fenway Racing. Whoopee, boy. He's, he took her right out next to the wall, used up all the racetrack getting down into turn one. That's not bad. That's not a bad thing. That's good. And he got off turn two good, Darrell. Really got off turn two good. And he was sixth quickest in practice earlier today. I believe if he hadn't had that mental error on pit road and uh, exceeded the speed limit, you might be looking at the guy that won the all-star race last Saturday night. About a three-quarter of a million dollar speeding ticket, mm -hmm. possibly. You might be looking at a top five starter here. Fourth for Ken. 29-3-11. Becomes the fastest four. Nice which is kind of kind of normal. I mean, that's where he's been all year long. With whatever Ford's got, he usually gets it. And he'll shut her down. Didn't get off turn two very good. He said, boy, that's all I've got. <laughs> I think the next couple of cars, the two and the 99. Sterling, I guess Sterling's got to go. He wrecked his car in practice. I guess this will be a backup car, right? right? Yeah, and that will be the very first laps that car will make when he rolls it out there for qualifying. So here goes the, the two, and I tell you, don't count this dude out. We know, based on the stopwatch that we were using up here in the, all the qualifying laps last Friday night, he ran the fastest of anybody. He ran a 20, I remember Larry, you said it was 29.50 something, 58, I think it was. 28.50. I mean, uh, yeah. 28, I'm sorry. Now, while Kirk gets up to speed, we want to say that uh, our thoughts and our prayers go out to his car chief, Corey Tucker, and his family, who lost his dad uh, in a very tragic accident earlier in the week. So certainly we'll be thinking about Corey and that, that entire family. Looked pretty good there. Got up a little bit, which hurts your exit off of two. But made it up. I think we know one thing about those Penske cars. They got the ponies. You might have two of them on the front row here. Because he is going after it right now. now. He got up a little bit there as well. I think that may have hurt his exit a little. But he stayed in the throttle. I don't know if he's going to take his teammate off the pole, but he will be second quickest at a 29-17 right now. An all Penske front row with two cars left to qualify. Now he's going to stay yeah. after this thing, and this looks Ooh. a little... They always look better on the second lap because the guys slow them down to where they look where they're comfortable. No, but the car looks much better on this lap. 
Gets a little up the hill off of turn four again. It's going to be a good second lap. It's not going to probably better what he ran on lap one, but it's still going to be a real good second lap at a 29-20. That right there would have been fourth quickest. Two, two great laps. And, and if I'm Roger Penske, you know what I'm thinking? Memorial Day double. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you got Helio on, Helio on the uh, pole up at Indy. And uh, you're likely to have Ryan on the pole here at Charlotte. I don't know. I think the cat's going out to uh, the 99 cars. The guy I think might have be the dark horse here. Sterling Marlin and Carl Edwards are the two cars left. This is the backup Pep Boys Chevy. And that's no Marlin. disrespect to my good friend Sterling Marlin, but no. he hadn't even been in, on the racetrack in this car. He's just shaking this car down right now during this qualifying run. And he's in the race, so nothing at stake here. Let's see how he does. Sterling's still looking for his very first top 10 finish here in 2007, but he did he did get a win here back in, uh, I think it was 2001, the fall of 01. The thing about most all these cars, because of all that's taken place here over the last three weeks, testing, couple of days, the all-star race, a lot, of these, a lot of these race cars, backup cars, have been on the racetrack. Sterling's first race here was 29 years ago. He started and finished in the top 10. Not a shabby lap for a shakedown lap. Not for the you. very first lap of the day with that car. Wow. It's exactly right. Going to get comfortable with it. I'm sure he's a little nervous right there. That's where he had trouble in practice, but he made it out there looking a lot better on this second lap, actually. He's gotten the feel of the car. See if he can pick up any speed. But did you just see, speaking of speed, miles per hour, 194 miles per hour. And that's at the end of the shortest straightaway, the back stretch. In a car you've not driven. I think that might be better. It is, Daryl. Wow. And he picks up to 30th. That's so pretty. For a car that hasn't been on the track. I believe in that. Yeah. And no, then, you're not kidding. Yeah, it's putting a lot of faith in your team when they say it's, it's going to be good. That was his crew chief slugger, Labby. Yep. So the 43 car field is set for the Coke 600. The only question is, will it be an all Penske front row? This is the last man to qualify. Well, he's got a half a hundred in his pocket. We know that. That's right. Question is, can he get the other half? Budding pit reporter Carl Edwards, who I thought did a great job for us on speed during the uh, Nextel All-Star Challenge. Carl can do anything. He's a cool dude. And was happy doing it, despite yeah. the misfortune in whoop, the uh, Nextel Open. Whoop, 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 whoop. Sorry, Carl. Nope. He's not going to be able to keep that half a hundred that way. It's going to have to come here on lap two as he regroups. Might as well toss that out the window. Yeah, that was a UGLY right there. Tried to get it all. See if he can recover. You figure he can get a, obviously he'll get a better second lap, but he won't, I don't think he's got a pole lap anymore. Parks it in all the way down to the white line. Yeah, but he just backed out way, way early to get it down there like that. Whoa! Whoa. That, bad, that, that bad boy's out of control. Quit ball oh. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, bud. I think if I were you, I would just bring it on in. Hanging on for dear life. Well, he's in the show. Yeah. He's going to have his work cut out for him come Sunday night, though. It's got to be really disappointing. He moved up one spot. He's 44. So three dodges, uh, five dodges, five dodges in the top ten. Only two Chevys, two Fords, and Blaney's Toyota. Here's the front row for the Coca-Cola 600. I tell you what, for a year that uh, the Dodge has, they somewhat struggled. It's looking pretty good here tonight, isn't it? Well, for the Penske teams in general, I mean, they've struggled, you know, for uh, most part of the year. They have come around here lately, boys. Brian Newman and Kurt Busch will share the front row for the Coke 600. We'll go to John Roberts and he'll have interviews on the other side of the break. Well, the field is set for the 2007 Coke 600 here at Lowe's Motor Speedway, and history does indeed repeat itself. The crowd is out in full force here, and they saw a Penske sweep of the front row for this weekend's marathon race. Hello, everybody. I'm John Roberts out here at the speed stage, and as you can see, the fans are still anxious about this weekend. It's a long one, but it is a great one here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Let's go inside now to Bob Dillner, who is standing by with a man who has claimed his sixth pole at this racetrack. Bob? 
Well, this is tradition here at the Lowe's Motor Speedway over the past couple of years. Ryan Newman eating a little pecan pie as the pole winner here for the 600. How's the pie? Stay away from my strawberry. <laughs> is the pie better than the pole or is the pole better than the pie? The, the pole for sure beats the pie, but the, the pie is really good. All right, tell me about that run. Very, very fast, obviously, but as the night progressed, it got a little cooler. Were you worried? Uh, a little bit. I, I still don't feel like I had a perfect lap. It was a good lap. Um, the Alto Dodge was... Uh, it was good in practice. We never did a qualifying run, and um, the guys did a good job putting it into the right uh, shape for uh, tonight in the cooler conditions. And I got to thank Michael Nelson, all those guys, Travis, the uh, race engineer, Penske Jasper Engine horsepower was great, and uh, you know, just look forward to the rest of the weekend. It's something to look forward to. The piece of pie is nice, but uh, having the trophy is really nice. Well, he's eating his pie here in Victory Lane on the pole for the 600. And how about Penske Racing? Ryan Newman on the pole for the Cup race on Sunday, and Elio Castro Neves on the pole for the Indy 500. Penske is doing good. Yeah, Bob, and add into that the fact that Ryan Newman's teammate is up there with him as well. It makes a banner weekend for the Penske organization. They'd love to cap it off with a victory here on Sunday night. Let's take a look at the full starting lineup, how they will uh, line up when the green flag waves. It's Newman and Kurt Busch on the front row. Elliott Sadler and Dale Earnhardt Jr. outside of row number two. Bobby Labonte, David Stremme also with great qualifying runs as well. Mark Martin, good starting spot with J.J. Yaley right next to him. Teammate Tony Stewart right behind Yaley and Juan Pablo Montoya qualified outside of row number 10. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 inside of row number 11. His record at this racetrack speaks for itself. Dale Jarrett qualified on time as one of the go or go home cars. Kenny Wallace in the number 78 inside of row 16. Another very fast go or go home car. Jeff Gordon, the 24 inside of 17. Sauter, Clint Boyer, and Paul Menard round out your starting field. And folks, remember, it's a long race, so the winner can come from anywhere. And here are the six drivers who failed to qualify. Paul Menard, Michael Waltrip for the 11th time in 12 races, failed to qualify. He had a very scary-looking wreck. We understand Michael is okay after that, as did his teammate, David Rudiman, in the double zero. So only one of the three Michael Waltrip racing cars will be in this race on Sunday. And it is a very bitter pill for the six guys to swallow who failed to make this race because it is a long one and plenty of TV exposure goes with racing at the Coke 600. Folks, stick around. Speed Road Tour Challenge is coming your way next.